this video, I'm gonna put three art programs to the test that claim to be able to make awesome traditional style painting possible in a digital format. And I thought it'd be really fun to bring this to life using epic alpha Pokemon inspired by Pokemon Legends Arceus, hopefully in a way that makes them feel ancient. Awesome. Let's find out which program is the best. Gotta catch them all. Not a Pokemon. We are a Pokemon channel. I always have a booster box on my shelf now. My kids are super into it as well. And of course my son was right off the bat begging to play Pokemon Arceus as soon as it came out. So we got it on release day and we've been playing that. Super cool fun. But more than anything, I love the vibe. I love that ancient Pokemon feel. And that's what I want to explore today. Artistically. I need a muse for this. I'm going to go get a Pokemon. Dave, I happen to know you're working on a giant yeah. Kaiju Pokemon. Venusaur cage. Can I borrow him for like yeah. 10 minutes? Thanks Dave. This looks so cool. Credit where it's due. This model is by Becca 3D from My Mini Factory. I'll link in the description. It's called Kaijumon Flower Toads. Really cool sculpt. And of course, really cool diorama by Dave. Go see the whole thing over on Tabletop Time. Link is in the card and in the description. I think... Boop. So this is Rebel 5. The second of the three art programs I'm gonna try is called Art Rage, Adobe Fresco. So we're gonna start off in Rebel 5. What do I actually call, call this? Rebelle. Re oh, wow. This is watercolor, but like builds up and mixes into itself. Look at that texture, that's nice. Okay, I've done enough dabbling. I think I need to just start making art. I'm gonna use a watercolor line brush. Finding with these brushes, I'm needing to be less accurate. Not because of any limitation of the brushes, actually because I feel like it's looking better and so much more organic when I'm just that little bit looser. Getting a bit of that texture in, but really like the appeal of this is when you can see that the brush shape and texture, negative space for it to sort of work off. All right, what, 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 what do we do for color? I'm loving this. Maybe this is a pastel job. And the cool thing about this really naturalistic approach is going over the lines ain't no big deal. In fact, it just sort of adds to the effect a little bit as long as it's, you know, within reason. <laughs> Tap a few splats in here or there, there you go. A few just, to, oh, that's kind of cool. And that, that sort of does it, just gives it that little bit of organic kick. Ah, oh, cool. Okay, love this one. All right, next up, Art Rage. All right, we got some texture. Tool size. Really? I have to manually type in the tool size? 100% tool size. And it's still tiny. Okay. Mm. Wow, this feels so 1999. Palette knife? That's, dude, this is bad. Let's make some art. I'm gonna try and get as much of this virtual 3D paint on the canvas as possible and spread it around using the knife and the brushes. But I'm gonna start really blocky and quite blobby and slowly but surely work it into the shapes and the textures and capture the tone that I want. Hopefully this will create a really naturalistic feel, but Time will tell. Now, as you saw, I put down a lot of paint to try and work with that physical sensation of painting. There were times when going through this piece that it did sort of feel like I was working with physical paint, which is kind of cool, but it's not as good in their digital representation, so it feels a bit off. Plus, sometimes it just feels like a digital program. It's sort of forcing me to be raw and rough, and I don't feel like it's looking cool as a result. <laughs> That's sort of where it ends for me because the lack of control is very frustrating. You know, not great. I'm not gonna dive in this one. That's my first impression. All right, moving on. Adobe Fresco, this will be interesting. Charcoal, crosshatch, half tone, I like that. Conte crayon, that's nice. Graphite, that feels pretty graphite-y. Let's go soft chalk, what's a soft chalk smudge? Oh, I like that sort of textures, the smudge. Oh, I'm liking this so far, off to a good start. Ink spread. I like this program. Put down my live brush. Look how it spreads. And it's spreading when I take it off. Look at that. Look at it seep into like the water part. Oh my God, that's so cool. And it like spreads into itself. All right, Adobe. 
you win this round. <laughs> so immediately, honestly, this just pulls me into the zone so quick. I think the thing I'm most excited by is that the ink that I did for this piece was all one brush and one size. I had so much variation in texture and pressure sensitivity that felt really organic and just available at the tip of my fingers that I didn't feel the need to move or change. If anything, I felt compelled to add more and more and more because it was just so fun. I did like 99% of the colors in the watercolor wash soft, which was a live brush and holy crap, this is cool. Like honestly, the, the way that it actually feels like watercolor and you put down the darks and it sort of mixes in with the lights and when the colors intersect, they sort of bleed into each other in a really cool and organic way that I love, absolutely love. It's that perfect imperfection, that naturalism that just ekes into your artwork. Now let's finish it off with one of those badass ink things. Ah, oh, immediately so cool. Yeah. I love this. I love this program. I love this program. So this was a really useful experience because not only can we compare the direct results of the different programs using the same artwork as a base, you can also eliminate the ones we don't like. So sorry, Art Rage. Rebel on the other hand, pretty cool. But I have to say it has some hefty competition in Adobe Fresco. So I am gonna put these two remaining art programs head to head and create an epic artwork in each of them using all the strengths that I've discovered about the programs to as much use as I can put them. And you guys can join in the conversation. Let me know which you like the results of and I'll share my experience. One experience I have to say has been consistent through all of these art programs is this. Specifically the brand new Canvas Pro 16 by Huion who was sponsored this video. This is the 2.5K version. It's absolutely brand new and this is the best drawing experience I've ever had on a tablet like this. The Canvas Pro 16 2.5K has 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity, their ever reliable Pentec 3.0 and a 60 degree tilt range. But then add to that the 2.5K resolution QHD display with 145% sRGB color gamut and a brand new 3 in 2 cable connection enabling you to power HDMI and USB all at once in a reliable way and still enable you to connect directly to an Android tablet or device. So you can create art on your laptop, desktop or a mobile device on the go or in a studio environment. So it's the most versatility you'll get and the highest quality and most bang for your buck you will ever see. So if you're in the market to get into digital art to a high quality but at a really affordable price, especially for what you're getting, go check out the brand new Huion Canvas 2.5K display. And a huge thank you of course to Huion for supporting this channel and sponsoring this video. All right, let's switch it up a little bit. <laughs> so this is my Pokemon Arceus game, and I just wanted to show you guys a an alpha Pokemon. Come, come here. See the alpha? You can tell it's alpha because it's freaking terrifying. Okay, so it'll go in the Pokeball, but it's not going to stay in the Pokeball. Ah! I'm dead. So that's an alpha Pokemon. <laughs> now the Venusaur that I dabbled with, pretty clear alpha vibes. So I'm going to create two pieces in these two art programs. But let's switch it up. Let's do something different. A classic Pikachu and then we'll pick something else, something maybe a, a little more relevant to uh, Arceus. Is Arceus a Pokemon? It is a Pokemon! Oh, cool. All right, Pikachu and Arceus, let's do it. So let's start off with Rebel and give it the best fighting chance it has and see how far we can take it. So my approach is gonna be testing both of these art programs with two main mediums, a thick paint and a watery watercolor. So I decided to start off with a, a clean looking Pikachu on the left side of the screen. By that I mean, you know, one of the more traditionally cartoony, cute, proportioned Pikachus like in the TV show or Pokemon cards. And here's looking off to the right where the alpha Pikachu will appear. And with the line work fully done, I muck around with a few different mediums, but it only felt right to use a really solid paint to fill in Pikachu, which I did and was pretty happy with the result. It felt pretty much just like doing digital art at this point, which is where I was hoping that the alpha Pikachu and having a much more textured and watercolored effect feel would be a lot more different and naturalistic. I have to say for the at least the first good portion of creating this, I was a little disappointed having come from Adobe Fresco. I felt like I was missing all 
all that dynamism. I mean, the ink brushes feel cool, the watercolor brush textures look fantastic, but I was just missing that traditional feeling of working with the mediums until all of a sudden I stumbled across what I thought was a brush that was doing it amazingly. And it felt like fresco to a degree. And then about 10 minutes later, it disappeared again. And I spent another 15, 20 minutes trying to figure out what the brush was, but no, it was a setting. I am a fool and I just discovered something I need to let you know because this changes everything. I must have hit something accidentally. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Anyway, and I thought, oh, I found the brush. I found the brush that acts organically and naturally. Like it's flowing. Like this is the difference, right? Like for the first time I'm painting and see how it's like absorbing into the paper. And then I put down more and ooh, it's like, it's watercolors, right? This is this is what Fresco felt great for. And it's doing it really well. And I'm like, what did I miss? Like, is it just the special brush? No. No, it's a setting that I accidentally had selected for the whole dabble and everything so far. It's this, see the tiny little button right there? I must have accidentally pressed D, which is pause diffusion. So there was zero special effects and I still had a cool thing as a result. But it has like way more levels that I hadn't even touched on in the dabble. And we're just halfway through the dive. All of a sudden, Pikachu just got a massive level up in the fight. All right, this changes the whole battle. This feels like a moment in a Pokemon episode where Pikachu is like, getting beaten and, and easy to underestimate because he's just a little Pikachu that all of a sudden the real power comes out. This is an entirely different art program. Far more powerful and exciting than I had even experienced yet. And what I really did quite enjoy though it did sort of lean more on the digital feeling elements, was that I could really fine tune control elements of the mediums. I could add wetness and opacity. And later on when I work with oil paints, you can add the load up of oil on the brush or the oiliness of the paint. It was really, really cool. Genuinely mind blowing and a really fun experience to use, which totally leveled up my Alpha Pikachu. Now I finished this Alpha Pikachu yesterday. I'm pretty happy with the results, but coming up against Fresco, which I have to say, as far as the first impressions of all three goes, it's gonna be hard to live up to. So we're in the previous one I did Pikachu. I thought for this one, I would do Arceus, who's the namesake of the Switch game that I've been playing. So working with the same parameters, deciding to work with watercolors and oils, I thought I'd do a really watery watercolor background and try and emulate a space aesthetic. Starting off with a really wet and mixed and textured watercolory sky. I wanted to slather on watercolors and see how textured and nice I could get this looking. So now on to Arceus, and this is gonna feel a little different because I switched from the dynamic watercolors to the dynamic oils, and it feels so good. I approached this like I was painting with oil. I painted the whole thing on one layer because I knew I'd be coming back later in details and I'd wanna blend it and sharpen it, and I wanted it to feel like I was painting with oils, and it did at every step of the process. Now, just like with any oil painting I've done in the past, everything goes through a bit of an ugly phase. And as I was going more towards the refined phase, adding those sharper highlights and shadows, mixing in some hue variation, it was really starting to sing. And this is my favorite bit, especially when I move on to those finishing touches, the glowing red eyes, which I painted on a new layer with some dry oils, which is nice. It's like as if the, uh, the oils I'd already worked with have dried and I've come back to add the glowing eyes without over blending the paint underneath. And then I just really wanted to paint watercolor as a layer underneath what I'd already done with a fairly translucent but really runny feel so that I could create some misty light clouds of power gently encasing this powerful alpha legendary Pokemon. And I have to say this is one of the artworks I'm most proud of that I've painted in a while. Not only because I love the outcome, I'm really proud of it, but it was fun at every stage of the process, especially fun with my Canvas Pro 16 2.5K. The fine touch control that you need for it to feel this good is just innately in 
such a professional and affordable device. So a huge thank you Huion for sponsoring this video and a massive thank you to you for watching this video. I hope you loved the outcome. My verdict is Fresco was amazing. And if you enjoyed my Pokemon video, let me know because I'm enjoying Pokemon lately. So you might see a little bit more if you want to. I want to. We'll see what happens.